Welcome back to Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel with a very special episode coming up now. The Concept Owners Rally to Key West, a 2021 edition. And with us from the Concept Management Team, Andres Carpenter, who not only is a, you know one of the brass there at the factory, but also he attended the event. And we weren't able to go, but our FPC photo and video crew did attend. Andres, what was your initial thoughts on the event? How'd it go? Uh, other than that, you missed out. <laughs> it's going to be a great time next year. So if you guys can join us, make sure you do. You know, tons of great boating from Key Largo all the way to Key West. And you did the event in the middle of July, so I assume the weather was pretty good. Oh, easy 75, sunny, great tan. Great. Oh, yes, everyone got a lot of sun. Well, we've got all the highlights here, so let's get going here with episode number one with feature coverage of the Concept Owners Run to Key West. Let's go. And kicking things off here in Key Largo in the beautiful Florida Keys. Looks like the weather's going to be pretty darn nice uh, this time of year. One boat has arrived, uh, Andres, here at the Caribbean Club, a, a place that is, to me, a landmark and a great launching pad for the event because we go boat docking there. And looks like the first boat, Jordan Litchfield's in the water. But tell us a little bit about the event, when you chose to do it, and so on. So, Stu, we usually pick the middle of July just because for uh, various reasons, um, one being the weather. Um, usually middle of July, it's really hard to get bad weather. And then you just finished up uh, July 4th weekend, so the Keys aren't as busy as they normally are. So usually we see it's a great time to you know start this fun run. What about the number of boats? I see a few gathering up here. What have you got uh, for your roster uh, for this weekend? This year we had signed up 32 boats uh, with two factory boats. 32 boats. Wow, that's not bad. So our first time uh, here with the FPC crew giving coverage of the event, of course, we're flying a drone right now. And uh, the pilot, Andre, with the drone, he's going to be riding on board, I believe, with um, Ron Levy and his lady on one of your 32 demo models couple of big boats here what are we looking at here we've got quite a i think an eclectic fleet a lot of different models here andres yeah you're going to see a lot of sizes ranging from anywhere from 23 all the way to 44 feet so we're going to be bringing in the names at the bottom of the screen on a lot of the participants try to try to introduce our crews this is probably a good time to do it with the drone flying javier gomez uh, 36 foot open pair of mercury racing 450s wow that's a lot of power for that 36 yes sir he's running close to about 80 miles an hour with that setup Jeez, what a beautiful boat. And I also had to notice that there's a lot of different variations in the graphics from mild to wild. A lot of people going back to just these solid colors, and yet some of the boats still have these uh, some pretty wild paint jobs. Stu, we got Ernie Perez here rolling in on his 36 Open, powered by twin 400Rs. Got just a lot of beautiful boats. It's 36 now, Nelson Gonzalez. A lot of 36s on this run. That seems to be a staple within the concept fleet uh, by the looks of it. Yes, I would definitely say that is our most popular model and uh, most enjoyable ride. Now here's a boat I saw at the factory when they were painting a George Perez, this new 4400. What a wild paint job by Richie Rich and his team. Uh, wow, just an amazing use of colors here. What a great job. Wow, Stu, this, this video is really bringing back a lot of memories of that day. You know, the perfect weather, the water, uh, Blackwater Sound couldn't have been more perfect on that day for us. And I think that's the magic of this trip from the Florida Keys from Key Largo down. Because remember now, we're going to be on the backwaters, the protected waters, for the entire trip from Key Largo down to Key West. And I think that's really what makes this a magical trip. Because you can do it at any time of the year. And generally speaking, no matter what the winds, winds are or the weather is, you're going to have a good ride. But, oh, wow, there's, a, there's the money shot right there. That is an awesome shot where you get to see, you know, the whole crew, everybody getting out, getting ready to go. Now, Andres, about what time were you getting started, and uh, you know how does this come together that morning? So we do start pretty early. We try to have everybody ready by 9.30, so before a 10 a.m. takeoff, we're at down to Key West no later than about 2, 3 o'clock. And a lot of the boats, I understand, just came down on their own bottom. Uh, I think Sam certainly did, Sam, from came down from Miami. But a lot of the boats just trailer in and launch right here at Caribbean Club, and they can leave their truck and trailer for the weekend, right? Yep, or someone like Luke Drazik, you know, who drives down from the west coast of Florida all the way from Sarasota all the way down to Key Largo. Oh, so they got an early start today, I'm guessing. Yeah, they almost get their own little pre-poker run in. Yeah, and uh, here's a boat I'm very familiar with, Marty Reiske. He's the new owner, but this boat, this 4400, did a, a long stint, maybe three years, with the Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, Noel and Gretchen were the owners, and boy, they were avid poker runners, and they loved bringing this boat. They brought it all over the state of Florida on poker runs and to the Bahamas on a number of occasions, so I've seen a lot of this one. What have we got here? Here we got Octavio all the way up from Destin, Florida, and a beautiful 44 that he's redone himself. 
as you can see that beautiful top deck graphic all those speakers up top definitely ready to go to party this weekend well and a big step for him you know here's a guy who's been a florida powerboat club member doing poker runs he came out of a 51 foot outer limits to that center console big move here we got steve johnson uh 32 powered with three uh, twin 300 verados uh great boat Great fuel economy. Looks great like top he's ready end. to go fishing, too. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the fun part about the fun run is you can pretty much do whatever you like on that trip. This boat's a little, little retro to the 90s, I'm guessing. Yeah, it looks like a 97 from Mike Martinez. 28, which is now our 30. You, you guys have an award for the oldest of the vintage boat? Most vintage boat, yes, sir. That was the one. He's got that look, you know, like those old, you know, 80s, 90s graphics we saw in cigarettes and concepts and all the Miami boats back in the day. Now, I had to laugh when I found out what this whole segment is all about because the official pace boat, which is the 44, is handing off all of the captain's bags to all the teams. So one by one, the boats are coming up alongside the 44, and Lewis and his crew are throwing the goodie bags out to everybody. I think that's cool. You know, we normally do that in a hotel or a, at a restaurant, but you guys, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> yep. Did, did any of them fall in the water? They nope. had to miss. No. Eric was 100% accurate. <laughs> really? okay. Yep. Oh, geez, it must be his years playing football as a kid, right? I think it was baseball, actually. Baseball, okay. Yep. <laughs> and you got to love these drone shots because you could never do this with a helicopter. I think this is something that's changed the whole dimension of our productions because you can get up close and personal with the boat and get a chance to see, you know, the excitement of all the crews. You could see everybody's just so jazzed up, ready to run. Some people getting a little hot decided to go for a little swim before the start of the run. But uh, I love the fact that we can get these drones up and really get these up close shots of all the boats just before we get running. Cause you know, the drone's not gonna be able to keep up. I know you've got one, did you bring it with you on the run? I did, we might see some footage of that later on in this episode. And and just to get this close and to see George Perez 44, and what a spectacular boat this is with its quad Mercury Racing 400, it's all color match to the boat. I mean, gotta remember when Richie was painting it at the factory two years ago and. He was showing me some of the detail that went into it. And I think at the time, it was kind of your flagship boat because it had this really super cool custom paintwork on it. Yeah, it was the first time in a long time that we had done something so extreme like that. You know, usually you find yourself in the middle of the spectrum, but um, in this case, we didn't, and we were happy about it. Mark Miller uh, with that uh, 36 with a pair of 450s. Wow, that must be a fast boat. Yep, another one close to 80. And Stu, one really interesting fact is that a lot of these boats are actually leaving with the uh, new racing motors from Mercury, the 450Rs and the 400Rs. Um, they've just really seemed to take off, you know, the reliability, um, the torque and everything. We've seen a lot of people switch from, you know, two 200s or two 225s um, to one single 450, and the benefits have just been enormous um, from MPG to top end speed. And the same thing then would go for triple. So you can go from maybe a triple 300 setup to a twin 450 and still get great reliability and still pretty strong performance numbers, I'm guessing. Yep, and you got one less motor to worry about, so it's one less uh, oil change. Absolutely. Well, of course, it's hard to get those 450s, and uh, I'm sure that Sam wished he had a set, but he got his boat at a time when the 450 wasn't quite out yet, I believe. Uh, or maybe there's a waiting list. I know that they're hard to get right now. Yeah, right now, um, if you're trying to order, I would recommend at least a year and a half, two years out. Yeah. So it looks like we're getting our last few uh, bags thrown out here from uh, Lewis. By the way, for those of you who are watching for the first time, Lewis Avila is the uh, founder and the sort of like the family patriarch of the whole concept group, 35 years in business. He founded the company and of course, young Eric, his son, is the guy we deal with all the time on the front line. So he's at the factory quite often. And then of course, in the studio with us today here, Andreas Carpenter, who is the uh, head marketing guy. And I think he does a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, I would say that. I've uh, I've touched upon a lot of things at Concept. Do you find yourself in the factory a lot, uh, touch, you know, making sure things are getting done right? Or do you stay out of the factory and work more on the business and the admin side? Um, I'm definitely inside and outside as much. I am pretty much split my time 50-50 between the factory and uh, all the other stuff I do. And sales, because uh, we, of course, saw you down at the Miami Boat Show and the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. And, of course, I think, I, I believe you were at the poker run because you're you're a frontline guy, too. You're meeting with the customers, and uh, I think that's important. And Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's like, that's a that's what you call clo up close and personal. Yeah, and you can't get that with the helicopter, what you were saying earlier. No. Uh, the drone just really changes everything. But I, I really think that you guys have a great team, and you even have some customers you know, like, like Ron and Cynthia here who are in between boats, and they were able to jump on this Factory 32 
Yes, dude, Ron's a good client of ours. He's actually had uh, two back-to-back -back 32s. His first one with 400Rs and his second one with 450Rs. Yeah, that was a green card and then the uh, matriarch, right? Yes, sir. Well, you know, Ron is actually a big helpful guy when it comes to poker runs, too, because he's helped me as a safety management boat bringing Miami-Dade Fire Rescue medics along uh, to do safety management on our poker run events. So he's always a helpful guy to have around. Yeah, Ron is the best. Here we got Juan Carlos Ibarra, or as most of us concept owners know him as Wonky, uh, in his new 36 with twin 450Rs. And uh, here we got Lewis's boat, as Stu was mentioning earlier. This is the boat that Lewis took to the poker run as the uh, flagship boat. Quad Mercury Racing 450, slapping on that, hopefully that's 50, because, you know, it's the middle of July, and we're heading uh, out for about three or four hours on the boats today. So definitely, guys, you got to get that heavy sunscreen on if you're going to be sitting in the open areas of the boat. But nice to have that big uh, T-top if you want to stay in the shade. So that boat moving tells me that Lewis is probably on his way to uh, start the event, and that means that the rest of the boat should be following suit soon. And that means all the bags have been handed off, and uh, some of the boats are going to be numbered, some are not. That's because the boats that just arrived probably did not have a chance to put their decal on. And of course, we did that for the sake of our video production crew so they could help to identify all the boats. Uh, because let's face it, to some of us seeing them for the first time, uh, a 36 is a 36. Well, it might not be the same one. <laughs> In my case, it's not. <laughs> but when you guys are at the factory, you can see every single boat. Like, I see two blue concepts right now. You see two totally different boats. Yes, sir. I see uh, an arch. I see a hard top. I see different motors, paint jobs. You know, the list goes on. And, of course, we see the people, and I think that's what's great about these uh, close personal shots with the families and being able to introduce the teams. And look at there's a whole family or a couple on this boat, eight, nine people, uh, and all, all ages, and I love seeing that. This is truly a family event. Yeah, that's what we take pride in. You know, this, this isn't just for one type of person. This is for all types of people. You know, whatever you're into, sandbars, fishing, speed, you know, there's speed. somebody here for you. Yeah, speed <laughs> on mostly. The but on the subject of speed. <laughs> there's a lot of us, uh, you know, who enjoy that. And, you know, somebody like Michael Hand can tell you he's, he's a speed guy. He likes that. Now, was there any discussion amongst, you know, the organizers, you guys, about how we need to hang back for these smaller boats and and uh, and, and be careful about how fast we cruise? Because clearly a big quad boat that can cruise 65, 70 all day and a guy in a little 23 trying to keep up, I mean, he might have the speed, but, I mean, all you got to do is hit one three-foot wake and you're going to the moon. Yeah, and so that's why we have our lead boat and we have uh, a boat in the back. It's like our emergency boat just in case anyone breaks down, has any issues, anything like that. And then we do have our two stops that we do for mm -hmm. not just to stop and get off and, you know, give everybody five minutes to relax, but let those people catch up that can't catch up. Because at the end of the day, we do have people that race and, you know, everyone's trying to go fast. Yeah, well, that's good to know. So the, I think that those stops are, are important. Uh, to just let everybody cool down, let the slower boats catch up, and that keeps everybody together as a group. Uh, and not too close, though, because I think allowing the faster boats to stretch their legs and get ahead of the group and allowing the slower boats to, to fall back, that's important when you have a group event for safety reasons because it gaps the boats, it keeps and ensures that the boats aren't running too close to one another. I think that's important. You know, you've got 110 miles ahead of you, and you want it to be comfortable. But above all, a safe run. It looks like we're finally taking off into the mangroves here, uh, Stu. Yeah, and, you know, the helicopter isn't here yet. The guys are going to be flying on a marathon. So once again, with the help of Ron Levy and his crew, uh, we have got our drone uh, pilot, Andre, uh, who is just kind of situated somewhere close by. Not sure where. There, there he is. He's sitting at the entrance to Dusenberry Creek. And I think this is a really a great vantage point because... He can get all of the boats as they funnel into Dusenberry Creek. Looks like everybody's slowing down nicely. We'd like to see single file through these segments. We don't always get it, but I think everybody understands once they get into the into these mangrove waterways that they do realize, and wow, it's pretty skinny in here, and, and they get into a single file because that's really the only way that you can safely pass through these mangrove waterways. Wow, what a nice shot of all the boats running through Blackwater Sound. And it goes back to what you were saying earlier, too, about safety and the gaps of the boats. You can see here, finally, you know, everyone's lining up, going into the mangrove, single file. 
nobody's trying to race in front of each other and you know that's all we ask at our runs you know everybody just be respectful of everybody um every, it's going to open up for you at some point um this is just you know the first five minutes of the run so yeah and there's going to be i think uh three about four of these segments of waterways this one of course uh Duesenberry creek is the first and one of the longest one and it just makes a big winding turn uh into uh Rupert creek and then you go for a few more miles and i think it's uh, tarpon tarpon bend that we're going to go through so it's uh or tarpon creek rather so i think it's important for the first you know, 10 or 15 miles we're going to have these uh close encounters where everyone's tight don't forget you know it is a friday which is good but there's still a lot of people who are down here in the florida keys recreational boaters fishing fishermen they love the mangroves they love them because it's a good place to fish uh it's protected waters there's a lot of backwaters that you can't really see and a little you know streams and creeks that go off into these open bay areas so a lot of people like to come down here even paddle boards and wakeboards and kayaks and small boats so you really have to be on the lookout i always ask captains to put somebody on watch or have somebody up at the helm with you to keep an extra set of eyes open to look for these smaller uh, boats or even just people in the water who are down at the surface level so that's critical i think we need to remind people not just on these group events when you're on a rally or a poker run but when you're just boating on your own you need to be aware of these things because that's the way it is in the florida keys what a beautiful shot that is yeah Well, Andres, it's, uh, it's that time now. It's time for uh, Eric to spend a little money and get a big badass helicopter up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it seems. That's what we made him do, too. Well, of course, this is the big drone. It's an R-44. No, it's not a drone. It's a Robinson R-44, and they're going to be flying with both left doors off. Out of Marathon Airport, this is JD Premier Helicopters. They do a lot of flying for the Florida Powerboat Club uh, and a lot of tourism rides up here, scenic rides. That wicked camera, that wide angle shot we're looking at, that's a GoPro 360. It's a new addition to our uh, you know, photo and video program. It's hanging from the stinger on the tail section of the helicopter, and it's gonna give us these wide, you know, epic vistas, I think. Just these, these wide angle shots to see just how beautiful it is down here in yeah. the Florida Keys. Being in this industry, I've definitely never seen any shots like that. So it looks like the chopper's finally coming up on the rendezvous point. And uh, this is where the fun really begins, too. This is where all the boats finally get to take off, open up, stretch some legs, and uh, really get going. So uh, this also gives a good chance for everybody to catch up, anybody that was behind any of the slower boats, um, so they don't miss out on the chopper as well. That's right. Nobody wants to miss out on the chopper. And I think that's what's exciting, uh, both from up here, being in the chopper, looking down. But if you're in a, a boat running along 50 or 60 miles an hour, and that R44 just you know plunges out of the sky up alongside you, that is some adrenaline pumping action right there. Yeah, it is when definitely you see that exhilarating. Come up. And you know what? I've been doing this for 30 years. It never gets old. When you're in a boat and a chopper comes alongside, people, that's when that's when the fun begins because that's when all the goofy stuff starts to happen, right? Yep, as I've heard, <laughs> sticks down. That's right. Well, that's the other thing, the excitement of having the chopper. You think he's there to race you, and the sticks down is an automatic reaction for some of these guys that have adrenaline pumping through their veins. But we always tell people, don't do that because you know these boats are fast and you can actually outrun a helicopter and out accelerate a helicopter when you jam those throttles forward and start pulling away he he's fast but he can't accelerate very fast and you we have a lot of guys that will actually run away from the helicopter thinking that it's a race 
And would you take a look at these shots, too? I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. All the boats riding up together, all up the front, full speed. Everybody out of the water, bows up. I mean, it couldn't ask for a more perfect video or picture. And and you know what? Spread out nicely. Like they, It's almost like they planned this in their sleep the night before. Look at how everybody is perfectly spaced out. They're in their own lane in clean water. You know, are you sure that Eric and Lewis didn't like send everybody like a little map saying this is how we need to do it? Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised, but you know, like, we do have amazing clients and everybody's respectful. Everybody's you know done this before, and you know everybody knows what they got to do, and, and that's why we love our concept family. I think that we just eliminated the 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 need for a concept factory photo shoot anymore. We just got to make sure we have a helicopter on all of the events every year. And because this stuff is as good as it gets. Uh, there's your wonky. Yep, and here's wonky riding at full speed, bow out of the water. Couldn't ask for a better riding boat. I mean, look at that. They really are a great running boat. Uh, a good chance to see the clean lines along the bottom of the hull, the step bottom. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming, but I'm guessing maybe at the same time, all concept are step bottom hulls or some of them are not? The 23 is the only one that is not currently. And here we got George Rodriguez in his 36 Open powered by twin 400Rs. And uh, George is actually on his second or third concept. I can never remember. He had a 32 before with 400Rs. He absolutely loved it. And uh, he is planning on getting another one also. And uh, I know that is his color scheme. I noticed that his graphics, uh, you know, from this, the paint sides, the light blue, they blend in to the colors in the interior as well. I see a lot of that, uh, especially even this boat has the same thing. A little bit of a darker blue, but as we catch up with Wonky here, you can see that the blue carries through with all of the upholstery and the sides of the boats and uh, otherwise, and even a little bit of blue in the motor. So not overstated, not a lot of crazy graphics like we used to see 20 years ago. Uh, but everything just comes together nicely, and geez, he's got this running nicely, doesn't he? Yeah, it's so subtle touches, you know, with the blues and the reds. Um, it, it's you don't want to overpower anything, so we've we've got a nice balance between colors. We'll leave the power for the transom, right? Yep. <laughs> well, there's a wild shot from our uh, 360 GoPro, and again, that thing is awesome. Yeah, it just you know, it, you can see how it bends. It provides some curvature on the horizon, and it just gives you that cool uh, kind of a, a, a movie clip shot. Yeah, it's like a whoa. whoa. And now we're catching up with uh, Ernie Perez in his 36 Open, a pair of Mercury Racing 400Rs. He's gone with the darker look, uh, the dark, dark blue with some uh, silver as well. These are very traditional colors now. A lot of the manufacturers providing uh, color matches that are similar to this. I like the black top myself. It's a small bimini, just enough uh, shade and coverage for the people at the helm, but you can see the ladies in the back. Well, they want to get their tan today, Andres. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people did earlier in the day. Well, it is the middle of July, and you know if you're going to be getting some sun, I guess this is the time to do it. It's nice and warm, and uh, look at the color of the water here. Just got to love that. Yeah, and I think that just adds to the effect of the colors of the boat. I mean, here we have George Perez again, um, that beautiful graphic, um, just the water and the lighting, and just really accentuates all the colors and the lines of the boat. And take a close look at the size of that forward cabin. I mean, that thing is just massive. Yeah, it's very misleading from the outside, but once you're inside, it is a lot bigger. Of course, we talked about this earlier, but the 44 comes in this model, the forward cabin, and then the open model has also a cabin, but it's in the console. Yeah, Stu, and it really just shows, you know, the two different models um, of 44s that we offer, you know, the forward cabin or the center uh, console cabin. And you do, from what I can see, about 50-50 in terms of the number that you produce, right? Half and yeah, half? it's all preference at the end of the day, so if the client prefers that forward cabin, they get it. Here's a great running boat. Who's this? This is Javier Gomez, who we saw earlier with the uh, 36 Open, powered by twin 450Rs, running probably close to 80 right around there. And he seems to be very loyal to the company flying that concept flag. Oh, yeah. I believe that is his uh, second concept, if I'm not mistaken. Great.
All right, it looks like we're spending more time with Nelson Gonzalez and his twin powered 36 open with 350s. Those guys in the helicopter must must really like that boat. I think I can see why. You know why the helicopter's following, right? If you look in the back of the boat, I see bikinis, and the helicopter has a built-in mechanism to follow bikinis. It just automatically flies to the boats where there's bikinis. So that's what's happening here, obviously. That's got to be something with that awesome camera you guys got hooked up in there. Oh, that's great. Looks like we got one of our little older concepts here, 30 Concept Cuddy, driven by Christy Ham. Great riding boat, as you can see, has the uh, split bracket, not the integrated bracket that we're doing today. Still a great riding boat, um, even without that step. And then you know they got the, uh, they don't have the bimini uh, extended, so it looks like they're just they're in it for the for the weather. They're in it for the sun, the fun. <laughs> they're like, no, we don't want that bimini up today. Yeah, no, no need for it. And a little bit of time now with a Nicholas Pino. Looks like he's got his top folded forward today, too. He wants to get some sun. A uh, very kind of a classic boat, 05, you know, almost a 17-year-old boat. Still got that splashy graphics on the side. 27-foot model and a pair of 300 Optimax, so he's still living in that two-stroke world. Nothing wrong with that. What a great running boat. Still looks like Luke Drazik's making an entrance again here in his 36 Cuddy with twin 400Rs. And uh, it's something people don't know is that the 36 actually comes cutty and open, and uh, they are both as, just as equally as fast. Um, there is no difference, um, both manageable in uh, rough waters. You know, sometimes the, you know, that cutty just, it's just a nice thing to have. If you've got some people that just want to get out of the sun, I'm sure there's a little porta potty down there. I mean, it's just a nice option to have if you're going to be on the boat all day long. You know, it's it really comes in handy when you least expect it. I'm sure. Yeah, and on these long trips, like I said, I'd mentioned before, he's down from Sarasota. It's great just to throw your luggage in there. Don't have to worry about none of that. Yeah, that's true. It's a great place. That's what we usually use it for. Exactly. Stash all the luggage. A nice shot here now as the R44 catches up with Ricardo Montegudo, and a 30 powered by twin 300s. Again, great riding boat. You can see that step out of the water. Um, boats riding on that back pad couldn't ask for a better shot. And you couldn't ask for better conditions. I mean, I think that it's just as good as it's going to get on any. But getting these kind of waters in the summertime is very normal. So I think that a lot of people tend to forget how great the boating is in the Florida Keys in the summer months. And everybody wants to be here in the winter months when it's cooler. But, you know, summertime boating is just fantastic in the Keys. Yeah. And here's Mark Miller uh, with his 36 that he brought down all the way from Ohio. Um, this is actually the first 36 uh, Cuddy that uh, concept did with 450s uh, to 2019 and it rides just about 80 miles an hour. All the way from Ohio, I would imagine that he is a contender for the farthest traveled award having come that far. Oh, absolutely. And I understand later now we're gonna talk a little bit about that when the boats do get to Key West, you guys have a nice party, you get together and there are some awards that are gonna be given out to the attendees. Yeah, it's a great dinner once everybody gets there. We usually all hang out in the pool for the first couple hours, uh, meet up at dinner, and then everybody heads out and parties pretty much. The more I see, the more I hate that I just couldn't be there. I had another event that I had to go to, uh, but uh, this summer we have cleared the schedule for the Florida Powerboat Club through the months of uh, late June and all through July. And if there's any chance for us to be able to come along, I'd love to. And here's the boat I'm actually on, Stu. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to Lewis and Claudia for taking me out and having a great weekend. Um, it's a great riding, uh, brand new 39 uh, from Concept Quad 300s, uh, top speed of about 70. And as you can see, all those rod holders running all the way up the boat, those outriggers, that boat is equipped to fish. Well, Andres, uh, that was just a fantastic first start to this uh, Concept Owners run down to Key West. And uh, yes, I'm indeed jealous. 
I wish I was riding with you guys. But in the meantime, we've hit the half an hour mark, and that means we're going to sign off for this episode one with full coverage of the Concept Owners Rally to Key West, the 2021 edition. We're going to sign off for now, guys, and you cannot afford to miss another episode because we're going to be back with the next show with complete coverage as we head to Key West. So you don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button right now and push that notification bell so you'll get updates every time a new episode is released. This episode is brought to you by Concept Boats from Miami and the Florida Powerboat Club. Thanks for watching. This is Stu Jones with producer Ryan McCoy and our guest, Andreas Carpenter from Concept Boats. Guys, we'll be right back.